Hey YouTube! I thought for this video I would talk about some of my Game Station horror stories. Now before we get started, let's clear something up, right? Game and Game Station were part of a bigger group, and in America you will know this group as GameStop. Now, my first experiences with um, Game Station was a mail order company. Yeah, I mean, they, they used to be adverts in the back of um, uh, regular game magazines, and you could literally phone up, order your game. And I've got to say, the service was really good. The games were fairly priced, and the delivery was really fast. And then some years later, they went online, and I found online the service was just as great. So when we got a Game Station in my hometown, I was really excited. I mean, I still loved going to budget computer games, but it's great having choice. And I, be honest with you, I tended to avoid GameStation. I never sold any games there because I heard really bad stories of people getting ripped off. And the few times I gave them a chance, I just felt ripped off every single time. And here's some here's some examples, like when um, the Nintendo DSi um, when the Nintendo DSi came out. Now, GameStation were trying to push pre-orders. They didn't have any advertisements in a sh in a shop other than just the staff talking to you. And someone tried to convince me to get one. And I was like, "Nah, I've got a DS. I'm not that bothered." And they went, "Well, how about this? If you come in and trade your DS with a, a pre-order, you'll get a really good discount." I mean, the discount they were telling me they were going to give me was so good it was like I can't remember how much it was, but it was like for a small amount of money you could get basically a, a better version of your DS so I thought why not so I turned up about three weeks later and I'd already paid my deposit I, I turned up with my my Nintendo DS and uh, they did this thing where not only had the price drastically gone up than what they told me but I had to buy a game with it and I said you're kidding me right I looked at them I said look I was told right if I was willing to trade in my DS with a deposit, I could get a DSi for this price. And you're changing the terms and conditions. You're, you've drastically increased the price, and now I've got to buy a game. And out of the games they had, there was only one that interested me. And I think in the end, I just I bought it brand new. I just sold it online just to reduce the price on my DS. And it was a long time before I ever went back there again. I did buy Dragon Age there uh, day one when it came out, and the price I had was pretty reasonable. I, I, it was about nearly on par with online, and they, they 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 were they were selling this limited edition guidebook, and I thought I could probably use a guidebook, and the guidebook they were selling was beautiful, and I I think it was something like maybe thirty pound, and I was like, yeah, why not? You can live once, and I checked online, and the guidebook was fifteen quid. Yeah, I paid twice as much. I think the regular one was like just over maybe 10 quid, and the special edition was like maybe just over 15. Granted, sometime later, I was able to sell my limited edition guy because it was limited edition, and I got nearly 15, 50 quid for it. So, yeah, I paid more for it, but I did get my money back and then some. But still, it is so cheeky to sell something. I don't mind paying a little bit more for the fact that you can hold a game, you can buy it, you can talk to the staff about it. I don't mind paying a little bit more for that luxury, but when you're selling something for twice the price, that is ridiculous. But what's ridiculous is this next story, right? Um, my local game station were really pushing GTA 4 pre-orders. I wasn't particularly that bothered. And apparently, the day that GTA 4 came out, uh, well, the day after it came out, uh, we basically, I think, I think how, how it worked was... Uh, my brother went into um, Game Station the day GTA 4 came out, and apparently they'd sold all that they sold all their pre-orders, but they were they were pre-orders deposits. Basically, people hadn't actually bought the game; they put deposits down, and majority of the people who put the deposit put the deposits down didn't pick up their games. So they had a shitload of copies of GTA 4 that they were going to sell the next day. My brother told me about it, and I think the only catch was. They were selling the game, I think it was £35, which was reasonable, it was on par of online, but you had to buy a guidebook, and the guidebook was £10. And, and Neil said to me, look, I'll do you a deal, right? If you if you buy the, the buy the game tomorrow, I'll pay for the guidebook, and, I'll, and, and he'll keep it. So basically, I get the game for 35 quid the day after it came out, he gets the guidebook, deal. So, I, so basically, 
me and him basically turn up the Tane Open with a bunch of people who basically left at the last minute to get their copies of GTA 4. And we're all told, right, um, we have no copies of the guidebook. But if you come in a month later with your receipt, we'll give you one. Neil, was, my brother Neil, was so pissed off. He was, he was just, but he was, he was fair about it. He still gave me his ten pounds to cover the guidebook, and he said he'll wait. So I turned up a month later. Not only are the staff confused, they give me some right dirty looks. And I said, look, what's the, what's the deal here? I've got my receipt. I was told if I turned up a month later, I could collect my guidebook. Eventually, they begrudgingly give me one, but for fuck's sake, I'm not being unreasonable. I, I'm just holding you to what you said you were going to do. You know, and there's always the, the argument the customer's always right. And to, to end this video, another couple of uh, pre orders. Well, one was a pre order, and one was just look at the price on the day it came out. Now, Resident Evil 5, I actually pre ordered that, and they, did, they heavily promoted it, and they said £35. It wasn't written anywhere, they told us this. We turn up the day of the pre-orders, and we turn up the day of the release date, and they whacked up by £10. Yeah. I mean, I'd already paid £5, and I was just, I was, I was tempted just to walk out. I mean, I think the only reason I bought it was I got to play it that day, and it only cost me £5 more than buying it online. But still, it's ridiculous. And I remembered when Bayonetta came out. Now, I think online they were selling it day one for 30 quid. And you know you've always got the recommended retail price. And the, uh, and uh, I think I think back then it was like something like £60. And they were selling Bayonetta day one for £60. And they wondered why no one was buying their copies. I remember they had a whole shelf full of Bayonettas. I looked at it and I thought... Fuck that. I ain't that stupid. I mean, if I really want to play that game, I can literally buy a copy online for half the price. Or if I wait half a year, I can probably buy it for less than £10. Which is what happened. I bought it there for less than £10, but half a year later. The sad thing about GameStation is, they didn't go out of business because of basically screwing over their customers for so many years. It was because the company was so stretched. I remembered that basically... Oh, nearly every town and city had at least one or two games and a game station and the company had, sp had basically opened so many shops they didn't have enough cash flow to correctly alloc to correctly fund the shops allocate games which is the reason why everything ended up being overpriced or at the last minute they would put extra charges on or extra additions like you got to buy this game with this item because of all that, I never, I stopped going to GameStation about probably a couple of, two or three years before they eventually closed. Eh, it's, it's a shame, but you live and learn. So I'm interested. I mean, did you have s similar problems to your, to people in this country? Did you have the similar problems with your GameStation or around the world, like in America with your GameStop? Did you have similar issues like I did? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.